Good morning. Welcome to worship on this Lord's Day. It is so good to be gathered here as God's people in person or in line or wherever we may be. As we begin, I encourage you to sign the friendship pads and pass them to others. Or if you're online, please comment uh, and let us know that you're here. As many of you know, Pastor Zach is in Cuba with Nell Hahn and the delegation from the Presbytery of South Louisiana. And they covet your prayers for a safe uh, journey as they enjoy the hospitality of our partner congregations and hear stories about the impact of our Living Waters partnership. Preaching for us today is Walter Jr., who comes to us on the recommendation of John Cannon, the pastor of Asbury UMC, uh, where he is a member. Walter has a Master of Pastoral Studies from the Loyola Institute for Ministry and a Certificate in Spiritual Direction from the Garrett Evangelical Theological Seminary in Chicago. He has studied under Richard Rohr and Thomas Keating, and he is a member of the Louisiana Blues Hall of Fame. We welcome him and look forward to his message. Those in the sanctuary will note the insert for the peacemaking offering, which we will receive next Sunday. A portion of that offering is distributed by the congregation and the rest goes towards concerns like those in your insert. The portion we retain will support all congregations' efforts in Cuba, appropriately timed. Our Living Water Partnership uh, is a means of making peace by providing clean water. Finally, I want to remind you to stay for board games and lunch uh, at next Sunday and October 1st and to sign up for the Laity Sunday Barbecue on October 15th. So we have a lot of things coming back to back. Now, with all this in mind, let us prepare to worship the Lord with all our hearts right here, right now, together as God's people.
please rise in body or in spirit and join me in the call to worship. We are here as God's people gathered for worship. We have come to praise God and seek God's strength for our lives. Let us celebrate the gift of life which God has given us. Let us affirm the love and hope of people who follow Jesus Christ. Join me now in the call to confession. When our self-indulgence enslaves us, God calls us to seek forgiveness. Let us find true freedom in Christ-like love. Let us pray together and then silently and personally before God. Most merciful God, who would have given thanks for all things and fear nothing but the loss of your presence. We confess our faithless fears and our worldly anxieties. We have done these things we ought not to have done, and left undone those things we ought to have done. Grant us true repentance, forgive us our sins, and give us grace to put away all that is harmful. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O oh Lord, you have heard our prayer. Hear us now as we silently confess those sins known to you alone. Amen. Beloved of God, let us be assured of God's forgiveness. The mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Alleluia. Amen.
Join me in prayer. God, source of all light, by your word you give light to the soul. Pour out on us the spirit of wisdom and understanding that our hearts and minds may be opened. Amen. Our first reading is from Exodus chapter 29, verses 45 and 46, and it can be uh, found on page 76 of the Old Testament in your pew Bible. I will dwell among the Israelites, and I will be their God. And they shall know that I am the Lord their God, who brought them out of the land of Egypt, that I might dwell among them. I am the Lord their God. Our second reading is from Ephesians chapter 2, verses 4 through 10, and it can be found on page 192 of the New Testament in your pew Bible if you'd like to read along. But God, who is rich in mercy, out of great love with which he has loved us, even when we are dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have saved us through faith, and this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be the way of our life. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 6, verses 5 and 6. Whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, Go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Welcome the Holy Spirit here.
Victoria just read that for by grace are you saved through faith and it is not your own doing. It is the gift of God. So today we're going to talk about grace. I'm going to sing you a sermon about grace and we're going to go straight through the teachings of Paul. We're going to go straight through the teaching that there are three levels of grace, of prevenient grace and justifying grace and sanctifying grace. And I'm going to invite you all to experience that here today. What we're going to do is call Between the Bible and the Blues. And I've written these songs and they uh, express what that felt like for me in my journey in life and faith to uh, receive prevenient grace, to receive justifying grace and receive sanctifying grace. And we'll learn that this prevenient grace is something that is done to us in life. And you've all received it or you would not be here this morning. And then once we can receive this, this something is done to us, then we can walk in and, and then receive justifying grace, what is forgiveness. And then once we've received forgiveness and given forgiveness, then sanctifying grace awaits, which is the indwelling eternal presence of God within us and us dwelling within the eternal presence of the one God. And so to do this, well, kind of, I want you to imagine you're walking down the road of your life and something happens and you turn. You hear something behind you like Moses heard, had to turn to see the burning bush. And Jesus actually turned at baptism when John the Baptist said, repent. That's a, a Greek word meaning metanoia, saying metanoia, that you turn. You have a change of consciousness. And then John the Revelator, the Lord is speaking to him from behind him and he has to turn. Well, just like that, we're walking down the road of our lives and something happens and we have to turn. And that something that happens is one of two things. And I don't know too many people in the first one, but it's a tremendous blessing. It could be a loved one, your significant other for life. It could be the miracle of the birth of a child. It could be the blessing of a great gig a great vocation, a role, uh, a way to make a living and, and share and take care of yourselves and your family. But most of the time, it's when we lose one of those things. It's usually by suffering that we give up the idea that we can do it all ourselves and we don't need any help from something bigger and more than us. And when that happens, we turn and we see a house. And that is the house of salvation. And on the porch is provenient grace. Through the door is justifying grace. And up into the upper room is sanctifying grace. And I'm going to sing you three songs about those. Now, the first one, as it happened to me, it was not real pretty. been a minute mile I've been long, long, so long gone I've been a minute mile I've been long, long, so long gone Yeah, and then the Holy Ghost You know the Ho 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 Like a blind man, the healer 
stole my sight. And then the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost shined that light. I'm going to testify, I'm going to tell everybody I see. I'm going to testify, I'm going to tell everybody I see. How the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost set me free. Show me the way, yeah. Show me the way, yeah. Show me the way, Ooh, show me the way. And like the prodigal son, I went astray, but the father took me back and welcomed me to stay. Because forgiveness is the reason that I'm here today. Show me the way, show me the way. That's where I found myself on that porch. And then I looked up and there was a door. And y'all can relate to this because it was like a screen door, like a veil. And on the other side of that door stood the Christ with arms wide open and outstretched. And he said, my son, come on in. But there's a cover charge. Yeah. You got to leave your baggage on the porch. You got to leave your guilt. You got to leave your shame. You got to leave your regrets. And you got to leave all that stuff from the past that you keep replaying in your mind over and over again that you don't let go. And he said, remember, I told Isaiah to tell you that I'm getting tired of hearing those old stories. Not only have I forgiven them, but I've forgotten them. And you're starting to get on my last nerve up here. <laughs> so let it go. Because it's not thinking, it's rethinking. You're not playing, you're rewinding the tape. And over and over again, here comes that same old stuff. I've forgiven that. Now get over it and let's move on. we got work to do. we got lives to live, souls to save. So... If you can let go of that, then you can say yes to the forgiveness that I offer. And there's just one more thing about that forgiveness. The only evidence of it is that it is directly proportionate to your forgiving everyone else. The degree to which you have accepted forgiveness is shown immediately in our ability, willingness, and the love we extend to forgiving those, especially those closest to us. Not easily done, but what a beautiful, beautiful way now to see God's gift of life. And this little song. Mm -hmm. Those are my favorite lyrics that I ever wrote. Because mm -hmm. it feels good. His outstretched arms. Can you see him? His outstretched arms. Where we belong. In his outstretched arms. He knows you got your doubts. He knows you done been around. But every time we fall down, there's a hand in reach. Helping us to make it right. darkest night leading us to the light and then we'll see
his outstretched arms. Can you see him? His outstretched arms. It's where you belong in his outstretched arms. healing is through and through feel it all the forgiveness covers us like the morning dew renews the leaves he hears the quiet cry so tight eternally can you feel that his eyes stretched on they call to you his eyes stretched on they wait for you won't you come home where we all belong in his eyes stretched out is justifying grace and once we're there the Christ has taken us into his arms and he takes us by his hand and he walks with us leading up the, into the upper room and whenever we enter that upper room it's filled with light and that light is the light of love that light is none other than God's presence and we when to enter when light takes over the darkness it fills the whole space <clears throat> prevenient grace was something that was done to us and it opened our hearts justifying grace was something done for us and it warmed our hearts and sanctifying grace is something that is done in us and it heals and makes whole our heart with the entire heart that is the universe. Every other person, every other thing, every other living thing, everything in God's great, beautiful cosmos. For he is that. And we are that in and with him. And Revelator, John the Revelator gives us an unbelievable picture of what that is. So when we allow this thing to fill us, this spirit to fill us, something happens. The new Jerusalem comes down. Salvation is not salvation from this world. It's a salvation of this world. It's not an escape plan to go off to some other planet somewhere. It's right here and right now. Jesus tells us that. God tells this through John the Revelator. Descending down from heaven uh, came the new Jerusalem. I got good news for you. Like a bride inside the holy city. Oh, here God will live among them. He said, you know, I'm making all things new. Said the one sitting on the throne. Oh, a new heaven and a new earth. You see, the world of the past has gone and death will be no more. Death will be no 
be all this crying and there'll be no need for fear for he will be their God and they'll wipe away every tear there won't be all this sorrow and there won't be all this strife. Oh, and the thirsty, they're going to drink water from the living spring of life. And death will be no more. Death will be no more. If that ain't good news, I don't know what is. I can't give you nothing sweeter than that. As I close, I want you to know that that's that place where Jesus told us to go pray. Paul, in 1 Corinthians 3.16, he says, Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth within thee. You are the temple of God. You are the house of salvation. The house of salvation is within you. It's within your consciousness. It's within your soul. And it is within your reach any time. And it's not a one-time event to be saved. It's not some peak experience on a mountaintop and then you come back down to the world and you got to live with all the funk again. It's something that happens each and every day. And all we have to do is be still, go into our inner room and pray to our God who meets us there in secret and gives us all the treasure of eternal life. I'm going to sing one last short song. And I wrote it because uh, this is actually a big, long service, but I make it real small for just a sermon. But this song right here, this all it does is called The House of Salvation. It just reminds you of each one of those three steps that we took today. So you'll hear the names of the songs, and you'll hear each grace and what it does to you. And I promise you it's not too long. And through the door of love, uh, uh, forgiveness falling from above. 
for us. Hearts are warm, justifying grace in his outstretched arms. House of salvation. Shining be a terrific sight in us, spirit pours sanctifying grace. Death will be no more. And house of salvation. Let us pray. Almighty Heavenly One, thank you for sending your spirit here today to fill the hearts, minds, and souls of these good men and women of God. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to come in this beautiful house of worship and realize that we carry that house with us everywhere we go. We thank you for your spirit the spirit that is the great consoler, the advocate, the healer, the comforter, the one that brings us closer and closer to you, so close that it's closer than we are to ourselves. Bless these beautiful people. Bless all that they know and love. And we ask this in all the holy names of God. And the people of God said, Amen.
As we stand, let us affirm the faith we share with the affirmation of faith in your bulletin. These words were taken from the Confession of 1967, which was written in response to the Civil Rights Movement. God's sovereign love is a mystery beyond the reach of our minds. Human thought ascribes to God superlatives of power, wisdom, and goodness. But God reveals his love in Jesus Christ by showing in the form of wisdom in the folly of a cross and goodness in receiving sinful humanity. The power of God's love in Christ to transform the word, this love of the Redeemer is the Lord and Creator who made all things to serve the purpose of his love. You may be seated. We now come to the prayers of God's people. Is there anything specific anyone in the uh, congregation or choir would like to lift up? I was going to say, our, our folks at Cuba, Pastor Zach and Nell Hahn, um, and the entire uh, group that went with them, um, as well as our sister congregation there. Okay. The children of New Hope. Yeah. And their families. Yes, gratitude for Walter Jr. being here today with us. Thank you so much again. I'd like to thank everybody who called today uh, calls and texts, most especially for your prayers for Mike. He is out of intensive care, in rehab, and recovering his strength and stamina. Thank you. For those who couldn't hear, uh, Mike is out of the hospital and, and recovering and doing well. All right. Well, with all those uh, before us, Let's join in prayer once again. Gracious God, we know that you hear the longings of our hearts. We know that you hold us tenderly and celebrate every joy and feel every sorrow. We lift up to you those concerns of the world that weigh upon us, and we give thanks for your care. As we seek to be aware of your abiding presence through prayer, we are mindful of our siblings in Cuba. May your word bring healing and peace at the same time, we are aware of the need for peacemaking and peacekeeping, and we pray for encouragement in all that you call us to be a part of. Even as we seek your will, we pray as Christ taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our offertory hymn, From the Nets of Our Labors, was chosen to reflect the character and witness of our sister congregation in Cuba. During the offertory, you are encouraged to think about your response to God's grace be it through contribution in the offering plate in the back or online or through some commitment of the heart or your time. Take this time to consider your offering.
eyes of the stranger, tearful, joyous of Christ. In the face of each neighbor, Jesus summons us all. join me in the prayer of commitment. God of the covenant, we have given freely to you just as you have given freely to us. Bless our humble efforts and encourage us towards wholeness. Receive these offerings we profess in our hearts as we look towards you for wholeness, meaning, and purpose in the midst of a broken and fearful world. Amen.
before I send you out, I want to thank Reverend Zach, and I want you to know what a warm, beautiful community y'all have here. I play in a lot of different churches. Y'all have a very special connection here at first, and uh, it's my first time here. It won't be my last. I also um, want to give a, a thanks, shout, thankful shout out to the staff, Victoria and Jake and John. These people do an incredible job. I, I've never heard a glockenspiel with the, with, the, with the heavenly choir before. So what a beautiful community you have here. I'll continue to hold y'all in my prayer and please hold my ministry in yours. And thank you for the invitation and the beautiful love that you've uh, given me this morning. Let us pray. May the blessing of God, the creator of life, be upon us always. Amen. May the blessing of God, the sanctifier of life, be with us now and forever.